Welcome to this week's Office Hours. Uh, I'm joined by Wolf Dobson. My name is Jonathan Barry. And our guest today is Erwin and Siegfried. You guys may have seen before. Say hi, guys. Hi. 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 So if you've been following our blog, our Plus pages, uh, our own stream, you know that we released um, Google Plus Hangout apps. Uh, Yay. <laughs> Um, but today's, today's topic, we'll be talking about what we release for developers, um, some of the end user features, um, and any questions that we have from our guests, as well as the uh, original announcement plus post um, this morning. So if you have questions and you're watching the live stream, go ahead and, and ask it there. Um, before we go uh, into the technical piece uh, about the features that we launched, um, we will say that uh, it's being uh, released slowly um, over the course of the day. So if you don't see Hangout apps uh, in, your, uh, in your Hangouts yet, you will by the end of the day. Cool. So let's start uh, with our new developer site. Um, so we, well, actually, I think we should start with apps. Or apps, right? Yeah. Um, have you guys seen, uh, have you, uh, 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 our guests, have you guys seen the new app picker and everything? Or uh, Not live yet. Not yet. Yeah, I noticed we don't have it either. Uh, it's a, um, uh, we're rolling, as Jonathan said, we're rolling out slowly. It's pretty neat. Um, we've got some, uh, we've got, uh, we've got poker on there. We've got, um, we've got some uh, shared, uh, like, collaboration stuff, like SlideShare and, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, a lot of neat partners, uh, and we really hope everybody has a chance to play with it. Yes. Uh, there's some photos uh, in the in the. Yeah. So yeah, take a look. Take a look on the developer uh, So for the end user features, uh, we now have the ability to uh, take from an app from one of our feature partners uh, to go back to any recently used apps, um, the ability to toggle on and off apps, and a new feature which we um, added is called extensions, and we're going to go into that a little bit. We're going to talk about what those are. Um, but those those are. Uh, different ways to interact. And of course, we have uh, another, the other end user feature is the Hangout button, which we're going to go into how to make and how to use your site a little bit later. Um, so the general workflow uh, is send me by Tisha an app, uh, Hangout, and there's an app in it. You can start playing with it. You're using the, the application together. Or you can launch a Hangout the Hangout button on your site and mm -hmm. you go right into the app. And we have examples of that in the, in the dashboard. Right so, uh, uh, first thing, obviously, we have some pictures of the uh, of the uh, uh, collaborating together. Uh, we have a picture of the first extension, which is the FX app. But uh, what I'd like to talk about right now is uh, uh, one of the big features is that you can now ship your Hangout apps in public, and we want to we want to we want to talk about how you do that. So uh, why don't you uh, click on uh, publishing right now, or should, should we start with? Uh, Let's just go straight into that. Well, click on publishing apps to make sure I I, I uh, make the things here. Um, right. Yeah, let's just go to that post. We can do it from that post. Great. So, so if you go to uh, so create a new Hangout app, please. Hangout app. Yeah, it's going to pass. It's actually capitalization. Then uh, go ahead and turn on Hangouts, just like you always do. Uh, now, go click on the dev console. Uh, sorry, go click on Hangouts. So if you look in Hangouts, we have a lot of new fields. Uh, and you can see those now, I think. Uh, so, uh, if you so if you scroll down a little bit, the first uh, first section there is uh, just the, where you put your gadget actually. Uh, we now I'll give you a section uh, where it shows the title of your app, and that's going to appear in the app picker. It's also going to appear while you're loading. So pick something nice besides Hangout app. Um, now uh, the next section there is: Is your Hangout five release an extension? And an extension, uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail there. But it's basically an app that appears in the leftmost 300 pixels. Oh, near to that. The leftmost 300 pixels of your screen. So uh, we've released a single extension so far, which is the FX app, which allows you to have more elaborate decorations. Than you can. But uh, the idea is it's for something for um, uh, sort of sign apps, like uh, keeping track of dice in a, in a, in a role-playing game or uh, 
like no taking app. Yeah, something like that. Um, it basically takes the place where the chat stream only is. Um, if you check extension and you run in Dev Console, it will look like a regular app right now um, because we don't have a develop. We don't uh, yet have a uh, 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 extension pane in the uh, in the hangout, but. Um, it's okay because once you go public, it actually will appear in the extension place. So that's actually an important thing to note. Um, uh, right now, the apps and extensions, from an API point of view, um, are the same. Right? So all the APIs that you have within an app, you have within an extension. And the shared state, if two people are running that extension, they will be sharing state. You can actually have two apps running now. You can have an extension and a regular app, and the extension will share state with other extensions, uh, other extensions of the same kind. You know, so if two people are in the same extension, they will share state together. And do it And the uh, and the uh, uh, main page will uh, app will have shared state with other main page apps of the same type. So the, but they do not communicate with each other. And in fact, you can't even tell one or the other is running. Right. So uh, sum it up. Uh, you can actually have a Hangout without an app, with an app, with an extension, and with an app and an extension. Um, so zero, one, 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 and zero. <laughs> For those who can count in binary, binary and, those and, who can. and yeah. ten, something. <laughs> there, there are ten kinds of people, those who can count binary and those who can't. That's it. John uh, is <laughs> demonstrating which area he's in. Okay. Um, so anyway, if you uh, like I said, if you click that right now, it will tell the uh, it'll tell the gathering server that you want to show this as an extension. It will have no effect when you're in, in you're in uh, when you're in demo mode uh, in uh, in the what we're calling developer uh, sandbox, which is Hangouts API to talk to that Google that. Um, if you're running against production, which is plus.google.com slash hangouts, then it will appear as a as a uh, as an extension. However, you can't run it against production until you Publish it. So let's talk about publishing. Oh, one more thing about extensions before we, before we move on. Um, when you flip that bit, uh, the only thing that does change is the size of the icons that are required. So if you notice that uh, my machine would that me, there we go. Uh, it's different size because um, it's where we place the extension um, launcher. Yeah, the, ex the extension launcher is on the top top bar where like little dog face and everything were uh, before. Um, and then the the uh, apps actually run in the in the in the base. So yeah, I'm going to show you. So this is um, a screenshot uh, of what it, the uh, what it looks zoom, like. Zoom in one more one more take. Um, so if you look here uh, in the next to screen share, there's a little icon there. That's what that's what extensions are. When you click that, it's going to show an extension. That's where the icon is going to be. We do provide a default icon, but it's not nearly as cool as the icon you can pick up. So you should definitely put your own icons up. Um, and uh, for uh, actually go back and show the app switcher. Um, oh yes. So if you go down and look at, uh, do we have a screenshot of the app switcher? We do. In uh, uh, well, anyway, uh, in the app switcher, uh, you'll see the, this big grid. Uh, it's actually probably in running apps. Ah, running apps. Uh, Go down, go down, go down, go down. Nope, sorry, it's in public here. My last topic. Some of this was written very recently. Possibly last night. Um, so right, uh, so scroll up a little bit. Um, that, that's a picture of the app switcher right there. Uh, that's where your icons are going to appear. Um, yeah, so it looks, it looks like the chrome scroll when you mouse over it. The thing goes up and down to show your description. Very cool. Um, and uh, this grid that we're actually we mentioned here is uh, is the selector or you see feature the most recently used um, as well. But we don't have a screenshot for you. But. Okay, so moving going back uh, uh, going back to the console. So anyway, put URLs to your icons there. If you put bogus URLs in, then it will it will just put the the the, uh, the defaults there. So again, be cool. Um, the black and white one is for uh, mouse down. Um, uh, application description, uh, right? So the application description will appear if you've ever been to the Chrome Web Store. You have those little squares when you mouse over them. A little white thing goes up and says, "I want to use this app." And in there is a little like one sentence description. Again, uh, feel free uh, to uh, sell your app in there. Make it look like it's fun to use. Um, By sell, I mean make people want to install it. Yes, exactly. Uh, then down in uh, uh, in support, um, you need a terms of service. You need a privacy policy, and you need some way for uh, people to contact you. And these are all URLs. Um, like emails are not sufficient. 
And uh, I think Gerwin had a question um, before we started about terms of service and privacy yep. policy. Um, and so the best answer I can give you, because we're not, we don't have, we can't provide legal service. Um, terms of service and privacy policy vary from country to country, um, and also depending on your industry, how you want to word that. Um, so if you're going to publish an app, uh, you should have your terms of service and privacy policy reviewed by somebody who can provide legal authority for the, for the countries you want to operate in. Um, okay. Outside of that, anything I say is just conjecture and, and what I observe. Uh, just, just make sure, especially around the privacy policy, which, which I care more about, maybe less than for the legal, is um, be upfront with your users. Uh, yep. So what you do with their data is very important, and make sure they know what you're doing with their data. <laughs> yeah. How legalese you want to make it, that's, that's really up to you and, and your legal but, resource. But, but you, need to, you need to tell them what you're going to do, and yep. uh, uh, that's what we're looking for. Um, support or contact, we want to pay. Hopefully it'll have email or a way to post or send people. I mean, even if you, I mean, even something as simple as your plus page. If, if you feel that's the right way for them to contact you, if you create a plus page for your app, that could be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Make a plus page for your app. Yeah. Um, uh, lastly, uh, you have these two checkbox. You have this checkbox here, which is make public. And make public says make your application available to all users. If you if this box is unchecked, it's going to work the way it has worked in developer preview up until now, which is only people who are in your team's list, um, in the, uh, uh, in, up there on the left, only people in your team's list are going to be able to see the app at all. They're the only people who know it exists. If you try to bring somebody in, uh, it, they won't be able to install. Um, if you click make public, everybody in the world, if they have your, if they have your, your project ID, which is that number up in the, up in the uh, thing, if they have their project ID, they'll be able to run it. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, keep that in mind. <laughs> um, what we, we ask you to make two steps. The first uh, is that you make an OAuth client ID, because as you will notice when you, when you're, you are running outside of developer preview, uh, that it will ask, um, actually if you're running, if you create an OAuth client ID for your app, it will now ask you uh, when you begin running the app for permission. Um, it actually, it, the permission box pops up before you, uh, uh, before the app begins running. And it asks for exactly three scopes. There's two Hangout scopes that are basically, we, we would like to, you know, uh, this app may or may not use your camera. Uh, one of them is plus me, because Google needs to know who you are, and then, uh, or rather, the app is going to know who you are, and the last one is uh, uh, more famous stuff. Yes, that's correct. Um, so anyway, it'll ask for these three scopes. Once you, those three scopes actually mean that you are now authenticated, which means if you uh, use the authentication sample that uh, I posted a while back, and this is now linked within the doc, you'll be able to get a token without actually popping up a box, which is pretty neat. So that means the, jo the, the JavaScript client, the Google API JavaScript client, which is in alpha still, um, you can actually use that within a Hangout to call OAuth endpoints uh, for all the Google APIs, so mm -hmm. it's uh, and you can get you can get a Google uh, you can get a OAuth to client access token. Google to three token mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's big. That means uh, uh, that you know it's 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 built into the uh, apps. It's a it's a it's a measure of, of uh, it's making it upfront to the users what they're uh, what uh, you're going to be doing in your app. Uh, it's pretty cool. So. Um, that's the first requirement. The first step is that you go and click uh, oh, find idea and actually click that. Yeah, so uh, can I, just a short question. Sure. Yeah, so usually when you make a client ID, you have to provide a callback URL and admitted sources for JavaScript. Uh, is there something special you have to take care of when you want to use the client ID for the Hangout apps? Or do you take right. care of that's this yourself? That's a great question. I repeat it. Uh, uh, so the question is, what's the callback URL uh, for a client ID that's running inside a Hangout? Is that is that is that right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and the answer is you don't have to fill that out. <laughs> okay. Um, you can just leave it as example.com as long as you're only running in a hangout. Um, yeah. And the reason for that is because the well, sort of long-winded, but um, basically the gadget server knows that you are running an authenticated service inside this iframe, and will take care of the redirect for you. It's okay. also Perfect. why you, uh, as you'll discover in the docs, that you actually don't need to re uh, send in your API key because the, again, the gadget server and the RPC services 
will rewrite your uh, client ID because it knows exactly who you are because you're, you know, we already we already off you. We know who you are. So yeah, by doing the rewriting, we we keep it secure without, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, it means people get aren't reading your client ID off your page exactly. Um, so it's win. So uh, again, that's all you have to do. You just have to like type in your project name, and that's what's going to appear in the pop up. Um, and you can provide uh, your uh, pictures and stuff. You go back. Uh, you missed the click there. Ah, uh, there you go. Right. If you put your product logo and your product name, then that's what's going to pop up in the in the uh, OAuth dialog. Um, uh, but all you really have to do is have a product name. Yep. Uh, yeah. Next, I mean, we encourage product logos. They're cool. Um, and then uh, uh, here, uh, just pick web application and hit create client ID. You don't have to worry about the redirect URI or the uh, site URL. Okay. Perfect. Um, then uh, go back to the. So now he's created a client ID. The last thing you have to do. Um, and you're, you, this guy has already done it. Um, uh, last thing we ask, if you're going to make an app public, uh, we want you to register as a Chrome Web Store developer. And so you only have to do this once. Um, yeah, only once. And you actually don't have to upload anything directly to the Chrome Web Store. All we ask is that you uh, register as a, a, as a Chrome developer. And if you register in the past, you don't have to register again? Yep. Um, if you've already verified, you're verified, it's fine. But what we need you to do, there's a link off the page uh, in the cases where you don't have it. Follow that link, say yes, I want to sign up. Then go to this dashboard page. And uh, if you've never verified before, the verification is a $5 fee. Uh, I think in most countries. In, at least in the United States. <laughs> in Mountain View, it's $5. No, um, the, uh, which is just a one-time fee to make sure that, uh, that you, know, you are who you say you are, more or less. And, uh, <coughs> After that, you can publish as many apps as you want. We just need, and only one developer on your team needs to be a, a, a Chrome Web Store uh, verified person. And you only need to be, and to emphasize again, you only need to be a verified Chrome developer if you plan to go public. Yes. If you don't don't want to go public, you don't need to do it. So if you're a university student and you're working on this for a project, you may not have to even worry about yep. the. You'll never have, you, you won't have to worry about that unless you want to make it public. If you're just you know, doing a demo or a hackathon, it's fine. Um, so uh, after that, hit save, um, and then you will get a. Uh, I don't have any content. You don't, you don't have an HTML. And then you'll get your enter a hangout link. Now, uh, go, go back. To, you, you, have, you have an app open uh, on that? Uh, you actually have it? I do. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, just go back. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about that URL, because this is also sort of exciting. Um, so if uh, if you look, that enter a Hangout link links to uh, Hangouts API, uh, uh, to uh, Hangouts API, uh, uh, talkgadget.google.com or something a lot like that, and uh, that goes to the Sandbox server. Um, and we talked about this before. Uh, the real the the production server is plus.google.com/hangout. Um, even after you make public, this will still go to the development server. You have to uh, construct the URL, URL yourself to get to the. Uh, uh, I think that's right. So, uh, and then can you make the? Can you show uh, an example of the? Well, we'll, we'll do it on the other thing. So great. So uh, there you go. So that's what you need to know about the new Dev Console. Um, if you get uh, invalid input, uh, which will appear at the top, if you get some of your stuff wrong, this means that uh, some of your form, some of your fields aren't exactly the way we're looking for them. Also, ooh, one last thing. Let's say you have an app that's public and you don't want it to be public anymore. Anybody on your, anybody who has uh, uh, ownership rights on the <laughs> getting that right. Anybody who has ownership rights may unclick that uh, thing, whether or not they're a Chrome registered Chrome developer, a verified Chrome developer. However, only registered Chrome developer developers can make it back public again. So. Um, one of some of the reasons why you want to make it un, um, remove the public feature of your app if there's an issue and it's affecting all users and you can't push it live, you just need to take it down. This is one reason. Um, if there's uh, some sort of content issue or um, issues because of user complaints, you want to take that down as well. So take advantage of that feature in those instances. Or you just want to redo it because you have even more awesome ideas. Um, then the last thing is uh, 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 about. Oh, shoot. I can't remember where I was going with this. Yeah. Um, oh, right. If you, uh, if, and, and as usual, if, if you try to go to a Hangout uh, and it's uh, a Hangout app and it's not public and you aren't a member of that team on production, uh, if, you go to, if you go to a Hangout app on production and it's not public, 
it just won't load. Um, and you'll just be in a regular hangout. So it's true. Now you know. Uh, so we went over the, the new dev console. We went over the new UI for end users, the new dev console. Um, also, uh, 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 also to talk about is we talked about OAuth a little bit. Yeah, we actually we basically went through. Uh, oh, we have let's talk about extensions. Oh, extensions, great. So go to the sample apps. Uh, sample apps. Okay. So actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt and talk about buttons for just a second. You notice on this page, we now have this cool red uh, Hangout button. Um, uh, that, uh, hello, Gerwin again. Uh, that uh, Hangout, uh, that button is a link to plus.google.com. Uh, here, let's go to buttons real quick. Uh, yeah, hangout button. Press my computer. No, no, it's right there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Maybe you should have pushed the button. <laughs> um, right. So, uh, uh, you need your app ID, which you get off of the uh, off the dev console. It's in the URL. It's the project colon that twelve or thirteen or fourteen digit number, whatever it is. Um, and uh, basically, all you need to do is attach it to hangouts.api.talkgadget.google.com/hangouts. That's going to go to the sandbox server. And when you want to release, you go to plus.google.com/hangouts. Um, we ha we give you example buttons in four exciting sizes. Uh, uh, we absolutely, uh, you know, we encourage you to use these. There's the images themselves are served off of plus.google.com, uh, so they're actually served off of these guys. Yeah. So if we ever, you know, if there's ever a change or an issue, um, that's the best way to get the up-to-date button. And also, we serve it off of our CDN, so it's faster. It's um, going to be super fast. Also, to notice some of the dimensions, uh, height-wise, line up with some of our other buttons. So, for mm -hmm. example, the plus one button and the, the badges. Um, yep. They, so they, you can line them up pretty. So anyway, so going back to the sample apps. So that's how you make a button. Um, please make button uh, in the sample apps. Um, so the, these are our sample apps we had we had uh, previous to this launch. However, uh, if you go into the Simple Hangout app, that one is a new one that I made, which is as small a Hangout app as I could possibly make, but still did something. Uh, Let's go to one of you the source real quick. Uh, sure, go to Simple Hangout app. There's not much to it. Um, uh, where you go down, and basically uh, there's some, out. some styling, and there's a button, and there's a thing that when you press the button, it uh, tells you who's in the Hangout. It's not super exciting. Um, oh, shoot, we can't run this because you're running a Hangout. On yes, we can't run uh, it. Curses. Right. So, uh, um, darn, that, that ruins my showing it. Showing it uh, isn't there a screenshot? That's cool. Okay. Uh, there's a screenshot in the doc, but see if we can look that up. So anyway, that is presented as an extension. However, if you download it and serve it yourself and don't check the extension box, it will show up in, uh, as, a, as a main app. Yeah, so um, a, a good tip. Uh, all the sample apps that we have hosted under Gadget XML um, from the past moving forward, uh, you can actually just take that and pass it into a new project, uh, a new Hangout app, so you can just run it and test it. Mm -hmm. um, it's really good if you're trying to show something really quickly and you don't have an app made, and it's also a great way to test without it's also okay. a great way to test that you are are are, are correctly starting a a, a hangout uh, if you're having various connection issues or something like that. Like, wait, is my app broken or is you know am I just having connection problems? So um, that that's a great way to uh, great thing to do. It's also just fun to uh, uh, they're, they're sort of fun to play with if you haven't played with them before. Okay, we've talked about OAuth. Um, we've uh, can you go to the fact real quick? Yes. Uh, we talked a little bit about how do I get an access token, uh, and I have a link to a Hangout experiment that will allow you to get uh, a token. Um, that is experimental. It's experimental for a number of reasons, including that the JS API is still in alpha. Yep. But we do encourage you to use it uh, uh, and tell us how it's working for you. Um, and I believe some of the initial apps that they do that we launch with Pat are actually using that, that JS client, so it, it is working. Mm -hmm. Works well. Uh, just. Since you brought up the facts, uh, well, we, we just started this new facts section um, for, for issues that come up in office hours and, and for the forum. So we might be adding uh, more and more uh, really relevant questions to this. And that actually brings us to uh, one, one, of the, uh, one of the new features. Uh, we, we didn't my favorite. It's my favorite. Besides the launch, it's my favorite feature. Besides the launch, your favorite feature. Uh, uh, if, you, um, uh, if you're working with media overlays, so you're doing the face tracking, um, can you make yourself a dog just to? 
Maybe dies. Oh wait, no. I have to, oh no, he would have to just die. Yeah. If you're doing face tracking, if you're doing overlays, um, uh, up until this, hey, the girl. <laughs> Exhibit. Your one is exhi exhibiting. <laughs> and 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 are exhibiting being animals, which is wonderful. Um, now, uh, uh, up until this point, you have uh, only been able to do HTTP requests to get uh, those uh, off of the server. Now, you can actually use a data URI. Uh, yes. Uh, you can. <laughs> we have an example of a data URI, which is the smallest data URI I could find that would still be coherent. Just follow that link. It's so I'm so proud of you. <laughs> it is a little tiny green spot. Okay, uh, but anyway, that's an, that's an example. But it can be really useful if you're uh, like drawing something in a canvas and then you want to rig it up as a as a an extension, or you're having somebody recording audio and you want that to go into the uh, uh, or downloading audio and playing it, and then you want to get the pull it off. Or if you just want to reduce image size and not actually have to download images. Yep. So. Oh. Pretty exciting. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, it, it, uh, the demo that we did for South by Southwest, where you draw on your face yep. and it appears on your thing, I actually did that through a server. Where I actually uploaded and downloaded it now. Now I can get rid of that that, uh, that step and just make it so it uh, goes directly uh, directly through your browser into your, uh, into your screen. This opens up a lot more possibilities with uh, data overlays. Yeah, really excited about what people can do with overlays. Um, uh, the other thing that we added, which also concerns overlays, is, uh, and this, uh, this actually, uh, this one is only for people who have the plugin version 2.8 and above. 2.8.5, actually. 2.8.5 and above, is that you can have multiple overlays on. Um, so, uh, under the old scheme, ah, still in guys went up. Uh, <laughs> under the old scheme, you could only have uh, a single overlay, or if you played a sound through the Hangout, uh, uh, then it would only play one, it would uh, cancel all your other overlays. Now uh, we support multiple <laughs> overlays. Um, I believe 2.8.5 is out for Windows and Mac. Um, That's correct. So uh, most users actually should have, most Chrome users should have that already. Mm -hmm. um, it's also rolled out to Firefox. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's way cool. Um, and in fact, our new FX app uh, extension that we, uh, that's going to be in the app feature actually does have uh, as many overlays as you want. <laughs> uh, and the uh, yeah, the FX app. Uh, it's actually quite, it's the uh, cat and the dog overlay to the next level. Yeah. Plus 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 uh, how cats and mustaches, which I oh. strongly agree with. <laughs> um, so for your users, if uh, if you require the multiple overlays, uh, they'll be prompted to upgrade, um, and it, it's going to be rolling out uh, in our release notes. If there's a way to check um, if your users complain about not having it, they can go to about plug and plugin remote. Then figure out plugin. whether they've got the right one. And you can help them debug. What, uh, what else do we want to cover today? Um, um, actually, that was that. That's all the new features, which was a lot. Um, it was it was like a, a you know a, a whirlwind. whirlwind, a whirlwind tour. We work right next to each other. So I think first of all, I want to start with Jordan uh, and Siegfried. If they have any questions, I know. Um, already asked one, but please, please uh, let us know. Actually, all my questions have been answered. Now I'm going to have to play with the new thing, and then there will be more questions, maybe. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So we're expecting Hangout Disco. Uh, Hangout Disco? Hangout Disco? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm working on the home page already. <laughs> I hope you're using our new button. So uh, I anyone who hasn't seen the Gerwin um, uh, Hangout Disco or... Well, now they'll have the opportunity. You can share it with too. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is a disco in a hangout. And in 3D. I also strongly agree with Yes, in WebGL. Mm -hmm. Sigfried, any questions from you? Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for updates for the regular API. Uh, I haven't tried uh, the hangouts yet, but I will do it now, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm still playing with the regular API, doing some stuff with it. And um, I'm waiting for access for more uh, streams and more uh, not so public items on the on the regular posts. Right, right, right. Actually, the, um, I saw your post. That's great feedback, and we already communicated that. Um, and the answer for the general REST uh, API statuses, uh, we're still working on things, uh, and 
we're not a comment of when they release, but we we hey you guys. Uh, we're, we're, we're not closer. We are not close enough to the uh, microphones. How are we doing? Is it better? <laughs> okay. Um, so any uh, so we're gonna go up to the the post and see if there's any questions um, that we can answer. Um, actually, I'm looking at the post right now, and uh, uh, pretty much there's been a lot of yay, which is wonderful, um, and complaining that you know what it is? It's this. It's your fan it's being picked up by the oh. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> it's so noisy. Um, and uh, I'm actually gonna drop out. Yeah, once you, once you, once you like close your thing there. Um, uh, oh, create hangout topic and hangout title. Um, you're still able to set the hangout title in uh, when you when you when you click on the hangout button, you actually will get the ability. Uh, the users get the ability to set their topic. Um, asking for, uh, I'd like to set the topic uh, programmatically. Uh, uh, programmatically, that's a that's a cool idea. Um, uh, that's cool. We should look into that. Um, uh, data URIs. Actually, the questions have been pretty much. Um, I'm I'm looking through uh, the original posting. Uh, maybe I, that. maybe I can just uh, ask another question. I had. Uh, always, I have the problem uh, to get the right uh, time of uh, of a hangout because you are announcing it in in your time, and I'm seeing it in my time because I'm I live in, in Germany, so we have difference of of eight or nine hours, and it would be very cool if there is a feature in the posting that you can surround a date and time. With mm -hmm. some uh, special characters, and they get converted to the local time. Yeah, that would be cool. And um, so that would be more of a general product feature. Yeah. 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 No. Uh. uh that's a, that's a good idea. Like like a macro script kind of thing. Or or are you talking more about having the uh, locale included with the post? Uh, no, I think the idea, which is, is pretty cool, it's something you'd see in a CMS um, system where you just put uh, time. And it would convert it uh, for each client to their local time. Mm. So I, if I did, you know, 11:30 PST, it would go to the German time zone um, automatically. That's a cool idea. We'll definitely um, send that back up. So, any more questions from the stream? No, I think we're actually doing pretty well. Uh, we're really excited to see what kinds of things you guys are building, and we would absolutely love it if you sent us. Uh, uh, Public apps that we can play with. Uh, yeah, especially if you have plus pages, we'll start following them. Yeah. Um, and back just to review, uh, when you're ready to go live, you publish that app. You can post the link inside Google Plus or any other social media tool um, directly. Uh, of course, you can also use the button and put it on a site or anywhere that posts HTML. Some kind of landing page. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how you get your app around. And once somebody uses your app, they don't necessarily have to go searching back for that app again because we, we surfaced that in the recently used uh, the tab inside the uh, Yeah, the recently app. used. I extensions do not appear in recently used. Um, extensions are, are, again, designed to be sort of more personal apps. So uh, uh, do be aware of that. Uh, of course, we have our feedback channel. So we have our um, issue tracker for general Google Plus stuff, and that's the best place to, to surface issues with the Hangouts API or the apps in general. Um, we have our forums uh, that we for questions and answers type of um, posting. And of course, you can follow us at Google Plus and, and ask us questions directly there. Uh, and I think we're waiting now for you guys to make some awesome apps. Um, yeah. con concerning the Hangout button, is it possible to uh, share someone else's Hangout buttons? For example, if Gerben is uh, publishing his Hangout and, and the button, can I use that Hangout button yes. on my once site also? Once an app is published um, pu um, publicly, then it's just a URL with uh, oh. Busta Hangout question mark GID equals the name of your okay. button. So anybody could, anybody can share that around. So you can email that. Um, you can make your own. Uh, you, you can uh, you can post uh, a gallery of apps, whatever you whatever you want to do. Uh, we oh. love to see stuff like that. So there's a lot of creativity around that, right? 
Uh, and I'll, you can also generate those um, those links dynamically, right? Because if you have a series of um, GIDs, you can just spin them up. Yep. Um, but yes, please, feel free to use our graphics. Great. Well, I, I want to thank uh, Gerwin and Siegfried for joining us today. Uh, thanks for all the questions and, and hanging out with us. Uh, Till next time, I guess. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.